and welcome to AJ Paints. I'm Andy. In this video I'll be painting Amiria, another of the adversaries from Maladum by Battle Systems. It's a tricky little miniature that's got a lot of detail. I really love this troll skull on the foot. There's a great big piece of coffin wood here and it's got a sword instead of an arm just over on this side. The whole of this creature is created by scooping up the contents of a grave and then reanimating it with magic. Just ready to attack your adventurers and give your party some serious problems. To fit with the decaying feel of this miniature, I've decided to use a paint palette technique known as the Mother Colour. In this case, I'm using this dark Caliban Green from Citadel. First of all, brushing it quite heavily all over the miniature to make a base coat. Now, the idea of the Mother Colour is to mix a little bit of it into every paint that you use. I'm going to start off my bone colours with this Rakarth Flesh. As you can see here, a little bit of that green mixed in gives you a sort of a bony, greeny colour and it really helps with that decayed feel. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I often use whole red as a base colour. In this case, again, mixed with the green, I'm going to use it for all of the metal, the leather, and the roots that are growing right the way through this figure. I'm using this iron hole grey to base the wood parts of the miniature. This is a bit of coffin wood and it's pretty bleached out. You can see it's really just a desaturated green at this point. I love to do rust and weathering and this medium orange mixed with the green gives you a great colour for rust. You can see here just tapping it on, I'm going for almost random patterns. I want to leave some of that dark brownish red underneath, but just bring this over all of the metal parts, just sparingly. Now I'm mixing some Mournfang brown to do the leather. Again, you can see with the green, it's quite a desaturated finish. It doesn't look really that different to the browns around it, and this is going to be a challenge later on. Here's a quick highlight by just mixing some skin colour in with that brown and with the mother colour green. Let's give that rust a bit of a pop with a brighter yellow, Avalon Sunset in this case. I'm working over the orange sections, still some random stipples and dots and just picking out more of the brighter areas of rust that I want to show. Now the rusty base coat is done, it's time for the metallic. P3 Pig Iron is a good choice here, it's a darkish gunmetal colour and I'm stippling it on, leaving some of that base coat to show through. So one of the difficulties I had painting this miniature was that there's just so much detail on it and I felt that it was all blending together. So I went back in with Wildwood, a really lovely dark brown contrast paint, to pick out everything that I saw as roots. The roots really grow right through the miniature, and you can see them coming up through the leg here, that I'm about to paint in a second, and they come up through the armour and they hold the whole thing together. Using this darker colour helps to make them stand out against the leather and against the rusted metal. With all the base coating done, it's time to move into highlights. And Pale Sand is a great colour for that. Mixing again into that Caliban Green Mother colour, you can see I've got a pale green uh, highlight colour coming here. I'm trying to focus all of my highlights as if a light is shining from the top right hand side. It's a pretty standard technique that I use. I'm focusing on the knobbly bits of bone, a tiny bit on the thigh bone in a second, and then some of the bits on the calves as well. It makes these stand out, gives them a nice 3D effect. I always work from a wet palette and my paints are quite thin as a result. That means that I usually have to go over a couple of times when I'm building up these highlights. That suits me because I don't want to be too aggressive with them and I need to have that second chance to build them up and just put them exactly where I want them. Now 
Now I'm going to focus a bit more on the wood, coming back to Morn Fang Brown again with the mother colour mixed in, just picking out the top areas of this. I'm mean, being quite hard with my brush. I'm not too worried if it goes into the grain patterns on the wood because I'm going to pick them out with this lighter colour using a skin tone this time. Again, mixed in with the mother colour and I start off painting it quite carefully trying to find the grains but after a while I found that just using the side of my brush and sweeping across the miniature allowed me to pick out the details that I wanted. Fang Brown's doing a lot of work in this miniature and it's the turn of the roots now. I've mixed a little bit less of the green in because I wanted a slightly richer browner colour and I'm focusing just on any of the raised areas. It's got a good contrast because of the wildwood paint that I put in earlier and you can see here I'm just finding any of the little pieces and building up that lighter colour. Flayed One Flesh again. This is quite a bright highlight and I'm going reasonably small. I'm also tapping the brush because I'd like to try to bring out some textures in the roots. Bright highlights like these really help you to be able to read the miniature from a distance, especially when there's a lot of detail and a lot of that detail is similar in colour. Highlights help to make the details pop, but also shadows. In this case, I'm using Wildwood, again with the mother colour mixed in, and also really watered down and I'm using that to pull out some of the shadows you can see here between the root and the coffin wood. I've gone back to the Avalon Sunset yellow colour here just to paint the buckle, make that really stand out on the front of the miniature. And using that same yellow to boost up the rust. I wasn't happy with how the rust looked underneath that silver, so I went back in and put a lot more on. Made it quite wet, and you can see here, actually this is a bit more of the orange colour, um, painting it into the links of the chains, and down the centre of the sword where water may have collected and caused extra rust. I noticed that this figure had a little bit of brain sticking out of its skull, so Screamer Pink made short work of that, along with some pale sand as a highlight. After looking over a couple of times, I thought that the wood needed a tiny bit more, so just a final touch up with the brightest highlight on the top of that. And to finish off, my normal basing method, which is just P3 Iron Hole Grey. And there we have it. That is the Myria painted using the mother colour method and all of that dark green mixed into everything I think pulls the colours together a little bit and then the real mixture of brights and darks allows you to see all of the separate parts of it. As I said at the beginning it's a complicated miniature with lots of parts. Anyway if you've got this far I thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>